being 11 is so complicated. I have no hair straightener, no one to do my art project with, no hair under my arm like Sophie has, and no bra. Mount says I can get one when I need one. When I need one. Sometimes I just need to see the sea. I remind myself that everything keeps moving. Amazon women used to remove a breast in order to shoot their arrows with greater accuracy. I did the breast test before dinner and nothing. Not a thing. Not a scrap of pain. I can't really tell yet which of my friends passed the breast test, but most of them say they have. Sophie, my best friend, who never lies, said she did the breast test last week and passed. I nearly died of disappointment because that means I'm the only one still failing. When I pressed her further for details, she said on the fifth slap she felt pain. I was so relieved. You only pass if you can't bear to slap after the second. Everyone feels pain the fifth. Even boys. <laughs> I didn't say that to Sophie though. She gets things wrong in school all the time. <laughs> she looks so sad when she realises. Women my age can become invisible. And when I finished chemo five years ago, I planned to combat this. Anniversary five brings new hope. And waking up in jail is a great sign. I've been a campaigner for years. I've been thrown into jail for far more worthy reasons. Yesterday, I just lost my cool. I was in town having one of my husband's paintings framed. And when I got back to the car, an elderly man in a Mercedes Benz was pulling into the space beside mine. And I was leaning over the passenger side, strapping in the painting, when he slapped my ass. He reversed in, reached out his open window, and helped himself. So I snapped the Mercedes Benz sign off his bonnet and keyed his car. And I wasn't too cooperative when the guards arrived, so off we went to jail. You know, when you're sick, all the things you can't do drive you berserk. I could never fully grasp why I hadn't done them when I was well. Archie and it, my husband, Archie and I, we never talked about my sick time after it was over. Not even once. So I promised myself that when I had the energy and the wherewithal, I would get working on my list of things to do. And number one on my to-do list was to move out of this ridiculously large house. I was ready three years ago, but circumstances halted me. Moving involves sorting. Picking up every single thing you own and examining it for its worth. Allowing its smell or appearance or existence to unearth its story. Memories can kill you. Used to think they were more dangerous than cancer. If only we could ban them, find a cure. I tried smoking too much grass, but that only affects short-term memory. So, my bow and arrow is at the ready because on anniversary number five, upon my return from prison, I put our house on the market. I found it this afternoon, a lump. I was standing at the kitchen window, hands folded over my chest. <laughs> Mam used to always say, I was trying to push my breasts down to my waist, because I always stand with my arms crossed above them. I'm glad now I didn't stop. I was sort of glazing over, watching Mal holding fort at the glass houses, <laughs> admiring his tenacity, thinking he didn't get the guts gene from me. I was only half thinking thoughts though, just glazing over the way you can with the countryside in front of you. And then there she was, Lily. I've named her already because it sounds little and I want to give her an identity separate to mine. Somewhere in that daydream, the palm of my right hand acknowledged her. Just like that. 
During a daydream at the kitchen window, Lily arrived. It's funny how I didn't move. I just let the thoughts come and go. I even thought of pretending it was five minutes ago and I never found it. Oh, I don't want to admit this part, but just like Lily, it keeps presenting itself to me. I had a thought. It was just a quick one, certainly didn't last. It's been haunting me all evening though. Just only a second, but I still had it. Do you know, it wasn't so much the thought as the feeling that went with it. The feeling was excitement. And the thought was, maybe Mike will stand up and pay attention now. I must have had tears in my eyes because I remember them spilling and tiny Malcolm down at the glass houses came into focus again. Little Mal, full of defiance. And I knew only a real rotten mother would have a thought like that. I had to wait a week for the biopsy. I spent it sort of 20 miles away from everything, pretending I was listening to my children and well, holding my breath, really. All the doctor had told me was that it would be a fine needle biopsy. I acted like I knew what that meant. Why on earth didn't I just ask him? I suppose I was relieved it wasn't a fat needle. Then I met the biopsy doctor and realised I take out my new personality when dealing with doctors. I want them to like me, think I'm brave, clever, and I don't want to take up too much of their time. <laughs> Maybe they'll give me good news if I have this personality. They stuck the fine needle straight into Lily. I just worried some of her might seep out. Can that happen? Of course I didn't ask. Some of Lily went into the syringe. She's made of skin and blood. Is that what cancer looks like? Didn't ask that either. A mammogram was thrown in for good measure. Haven't had my breasts crushed in a while. Remind me of Johnny Brady squeezing my breast behind the sheds at the creamery. Cold, hard, and I'm not ready for this. It's like he wanted to take them home with him. I was afraid it had burst Lily and she'd spread. Can that happen? I didn't ask. In fact, I didn't even say a word when the doctor said Lily is cancer. I just stood there grinning like an idiot, wanting him to know I'm polite in situations like this. He said he'll... Um, Take the breast and see about the lymph nodes. There's more to Lily than meets the eye. How do I tell the kids? Do I tell the kids? They know what cancer is. Can I just not tell them? Say it's something else. Darren's eyes were out in sticks when I got back to the waiting room this morning. I said nothing until we were in the car. I told her and she closed her eyes. Green eyeshadow on the lids. It seemed so stupid. Imagine spending any time at all applying green eyeshadow. <sighs> then she opened her eyes, turned on the engine and I panicked. I asked her, how do I tell the kids? And Mike... She said, I'm the only one who can answer that. I asked her to drop me to work, to the salon. I caught Dave's eye through the window and pointed towards Roaches. On my second vodka, I told him. He asked which one. I told him it's next Friday, I'm getting the whole lot removed. He looked down, not like Darren did or like Mike would in an embarrassed, useless way, but in a sad sort of way. I felt sorry for him. Why was I feeling sorry for him? How do I tell the kids, Dave? We hugged for a long time. What if I explain everything, but I don't use the word cancer? He said, the village is too small, they'll hear it somewhere. He's right. 
He asked if he could have one last feel and I laughed for the first time today. Mammy's going into the hospital on Friday to get her left boob taken away because there are parts of it that make her sick if she doesn't. That means I'll have to spend the weekend boring Malcolm when Daddy's working. Just when I thought my life couldn't get any worse. <laughs> Malcolm thinks cancer is green. <laughs> I wonder if it's contagious. Mike's only concern is the kids. He didn't ask me when it started, how I found the lump, how do I feel, why I hadn't told him sooner. He didn't come near me. He sort of slouched against the door, staring at the kids' faces and waited for it to be over. I wish my mother was still alive. What will I look like? I'll probably need chemotherapy due to the size of the tumour. Hope my moustache falls out on my leg hair. They may take some lymph nodes. They'll know for sure when they open me up. It's creepy. Thank God they knock you out for this sort of stuff. All the efforts to cover up, to hide the stretch marks by the right bra, the one that gives you cleavage. The hair styles, the hair dyes, the hair straighteners, conditioners, curlers, the fake tan. All the rituals. Ridiculous. So ridiculous. God, I'd love to be ridiculous again. I want chemotherapy, though. I want it zapped out of me. I keep thinking of the computer game Malplay's Minesweeper. Obliterate Lily and all her friends. The night of Mammy's operation, Darren took us to Roaches for dinner. We spent the entire time talking about Malcolm wanting to be an astronaut. Why? We know he won't be. When he was six, he wanted to be in Alice Station. Of course, we had to talk about that too. Why go out for dinner when Mammy's in hospital? What's the point of me passing the breast test if I'm going to have to get them cut off like Mammy? Malcolm was at himself again. Maybe we can get them cut off. Mammy was still in bed when I got up this morning. I hope she's okay. She has a big long bandage down her arm because I think they removed some of that too. She has only one breast now. I have none, she has one. What sort of family are we at all? Where's me bow and arrow? I took the house off the market six weeks ago because there's still so much to clear. It's time consuming. But only because some days I just can't face it. Old laptop the other day. Pressed pause instantly. That's been put aside for another day. I'm more invisible than ever, and I'm not moving quickly. It's taken forever. Clearing is exhausting. And I think the shadow's back. I haven't seen it for ages, and just the other day I was going to the front door and I thought I saw it out of the corner of my eye, waiting for me to see it before it disappeared. Feels like things are shifting, going backwards. And no marks being made around here. There's more hair on the pillow this morning when I woke up. Didn't have the energy to remove it before Mike woke up. 
I felt him notice. He held his breath for what seemed like ages and then put his arm around me. I just laid there stiff as a board and pretended to be asleep. It's not that easy, Mike. This afternoon he said, come to the hay barn and I'll shave your head. I think he's trying. I'm too tired to notice. I said, okay. Mammy is a brilliant hairdresser, so when she told me Daddy was going to shave her head, I couldn't believe it. Why didn't she ask Dave from the salon? What was she thinking? I tried my best to watch, but Malcolm kept on burping. And anyway, did anyone even bother to ask me how I felt about having a bald mother? No. So I left. I heard Mam saying, leave her be, Mike. Will she leave me be? Anyway, what she doesn't know is that I got a hair straightener yesterday after school in the chemist, with my own money. I keep it under the mattress. I've burnt my ears twice, but I love it. Mike asked, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong is I have no hair. What's wrong is I'm too tired to brush my teeth. Everything tastes like metal. I don't even know what Malcolm took in his lunch today. I hate the clothes Darren bought for me. And now I've broken Lindsay's favorite mug, the one with the stupid horse in the red hat, she'll go mad. Mary Gallagher rang yesterday and told me that Lindsay asked her to bring her bra shopping. She actually offered to do it. My little girl's first bra. Show what I do every morning when I wake up. I force myself into the future with the kids. Lindsay's wedding and I'm there. Mal's graduation and I'm there. Debs is leaving search results and I can't stop. I'm doing it all day, it's like an addiction. I'm afraid if I don't do it. What's wrong is I have no one to talk to. Mike says I have him. I said nothing. No, Mike, I don't have you. You didn't say one word when I told you, and you haven't said anything since. I can manage myself. I've actually started playing with Malcolm. There's nothing to do around here except for jobs. Mammy's no fun anymore. And I know nobody's fun when they're sick. But most people are only sick for a week. <sighs> Darren isn't any good at maths, so I'm not getting any help with my homework. I wish everything could go back to the way it was when Sophie was my best friend and Mammy could do more than just play board games. I usually end up playing hide and seek with Mel. He always hides in the same place. I'm never having children. She upsets me sometimes, you know. Gorgeous rose with her frightened eyes. She sort of haunts me because she functions. And she deals with the day to day, you can see it. She looks at me like I'm great and I don't contradict her. I don't tell her that I didn't cope. I 
I love the fact that she admires me. Makes me feel like my old self again. When I got cancer, I didn't cope well. I ignored Archie. Shut him out. Punished him. I never gave up. Kept on minding me. And when I was better, we were okay again. And he knew that I didn't want to talk about what happened, so we never did. And I never got to explain why I shut him out. I never said sorry. And he died of a bloody heart attack. Yesterday, Schneider Gorman shoplifted an ice pink nail polish from Value Safe. And she got caught. Tammy says she'll probably have to go to a detention centre in Cork. We never go anywhere anymore. Life is totally boring. In fact, I even find school interesting. This just shows you how exciting things are around here. I hope Amy's eyebrows will go back soon. I can't wait. I hate walking Malcolm to and from school. I wish I could go to a detention centre in Cork. Treatment finished today. Didn't realise it was my last one. Wasn't prepared. Elaine, the really young nurse, was taking my line out and wishing me the best. I followed her up to Dr Mills' office dried my eyes and watched his face while he explained my medication. Then back to Darren at reception. Didn't want to leave the hospital. I know I'm supposed to be delighted, but I'm not. Going to the hospital means I'm doing something crucial, important. I feel like going back to Dr Mills and saying, OK, so I have my tablets, but what else do you prescribe? That I cross my fingers? Just hope Lily doesn't come back. Is that what I do now? For the rest of my life? I've joined a support group in Bray. And it's charming. Small. Only six, including me. Two frightened roses who've just fled the treatment nest. And three who've been diagnosed between three and five years. Small bit of confusion when I arrived. Thought I might end up in jail again for unworthy reasons. See, I had thought, yeah, with my five-year anniversary badge and my experience in supporting Rose, that I might be leading a group. But a small, squeaky mouse type of woman on the desk informed me that Rachel will be facilitating the group. Rachel, she went on to say, is a nurse and a counsellor. Rachel's a very conservative dresser. I was hoping it wouldn't reflect on her attitude. But she seems very interested in all of us. They love me. They love how long I'm well. I bring hope. <laughs> I suggested Sunday afternoon walks. And Rachel reminded me that energy levels vary. I said I'd do piggybacks and they laughed. I wasn't joking. I'm making a difference, however small. I haven't been around that many human beings and liked it in a long, long time. They're all so honest. You know? The worst part was losing my hair telling the children, not looking like myself, losing my boyfriend, needing surgery but not chemo, 
-hmm. and the shadow, the fear of it returning. Everybody understood the shadow. And then I told them about Archie, about how I didn't cope. And they listened like velvet. And Rachel said that prognosis had improved since I was sick. I would be treated differently now. Thank you, Rachel. But that doesn't excuse my behaviour. <laughs> Mike drove me to Cork last week for reconstructive surgery. Now I feel like I've come full circle. I'd always imagined full circle meaning things going back to the way they were. I couldn't have been more wrong. <laughs> The shadow's here now, and it's here to stay. Do you know what? It's not always a bad thing. It can root you in the present like nothing else. I can be flung back into a memory at the drop of a hat. Mike says it's like I'm watching my own private movie, completely transported. It's not always a bad thing either. I was doing Mary Gallagher's roots today, and Thrays passed by. Thrays from chemo. I don't even know her. But we were linked in a way that not too many people can say they are. She didn't even see me, but she threw me straight back in. Back to one of the days I was having chemo. I people watch. Thray sits across the way with her husband. He always sits with her. Their wrinkly hands laced together. They start laughing today and they can't stop. It's a private joke, and they laugh like you do when you're in school, when you know you're going to get in trouble, so that makes it worse. They look down, shake for a while, and then come to a stop. But the moment their eyes meet, they're off again. I can't stop smiling. And then the tears come, laughing tears falling out of their eyes. And I notice Therese's cannula, the line of chemo pumping into her. It seems so secondary to the fun they're having. It seems so secondary because for that moment it really was. <laughs>